While I'm not an expert on testing GPUs, I have done a few testings in the past with the help of MSI Afterburner. As it is one of the best GPU overclocking tools, it makes sense to use it as it also helps you monitor the real-time metrics that include usage, temperature, FPS, frame times and many more. Similarly, there are other popular tools like CapFrameX and Intel PresentMon that are used by professional GPU reviewers for GPU testing. Intel PresentMon might not be very popular right now but it is soon going to be. Currently, CapFrameX utilizes Present Mon because the latter on its own cannot collect data and doesn't have a user-friendly interface. So Intel has made some big changes in its software and now it is not only getting enhanced data collection feature and better user-friendly interface but it is also going to boast a brand new metric called GPU Busy. GPU Busy is something that totally changes how the performance of any hardware in games can be monitored more accurately. Unlike the frame time which is currently the most popular metric to understand stutters in game, GPU Busy will focus more on how a GPU is being used in real time. To understand this, Intel has revealed its working where it shows how GPU Busy will function. Unlike the frame time which covers three segments including weight, game and render, GPU Busy will extend its functionality towards another weight section bringing in more data to understand how the GPU is working. So if the GPU is 100% at any point, it will mean that there is a performance bottleneck from the GPU side at that point in a game. But if it is lower than 100%, it means that it is bottlenecking from the CPU side. The conventional metrics of CPU and GPU use usage don't collect this type of data and therefore analyzing both GPU busy and frame time will help in understanding not only the possible bottleneck from the hardware but also the problems in game optimizations. Now the interesting thing here to see is that even though this metric can be used directly from the present mon, CapFrameX has announced that it is working to integrate the latest version making it one of the first tools to feature GPU busy metric. With this metric I hope that popular GPU reviewers will adapt to newer formats to test new GPUs so that we can get an even more detailed analysis analysis. And talking about Intel, we already know how many times the company has improved its ARC GPUs through drivers only. Whether we talk about the gaming performance in newer titles or even titles that work on older DirectX APIs, Intel GPUs have become a good competitor to one of the most popular AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. Surprisingly, the A770 and A750 were not the only ones that got affected with frequent driver updates, but the entry-level A380 also got a significant change in its specs. As reported by a member of Neowin forums, he found out that his A380 got a good GPU clock boost with the latest update. Originally, the A380 was featuring 2000 MHz of GPU clock speed which is the default clock speed of this card. But with the latest driver update, his clock speed went up to 2150 MHz which is a solid 7.5% uplift. Now a 7.5% might not be too big but trust me, when it comes to GPU clock speeds, a 150 MHz is a significant change that can result in a noticeable performance increase. With this, the A380's specs like pixel and texture fill rate also increased noticeably but this is not the only thing the new driver brought to the table. The new firmware reportedly brought many bug fixes, stability improvements, better fan behavior and even better compatibility with HDMI connections. So Intel is not stopping itself from applying 100% effort in the GPU sphere and currently the prices of ARC GPUs are at an all-time low that it makes buying them a no-brainer. The flagship A770 8GB edition can be found for $249 and the 16GB version for just $300. At this price, you won't find any current-gen GPU from either AMD and NVIDIA that provide 16GB of VRAM. Also, the A750 is at just $200 and the A380 is currently the cheapest sitting at only $100 on New Egg, making it the best $100 GPU on the market right now. I will have my affiliate links in the description if you want to buy one of these cards, which will also provide me a small commission if you decide to buy from my links. Lastly, we got some leaks on the upcoming Intel's new LGA 1851 platform that suggests that this platform will last until 2026. This report comes from TLC who said that LGA 1851 seems to be continuing until 2026. He also tweeted a bunch of related stuff, one of which includes that in addition to compute style L2 and L3 caches, there will be a dedicated L3 cache for the GPU tile in Arrow Lake S. Also that the L2 cache on it will be increased by 3 megabytes per core as I talked about in one of my recent videos. So just just like the current LGA 1700 platform, the LG 1851 is likely to stay in the market for around 3 years, which is fine considering that it will not only support the Arrow Lake S processors but also its successor, the Panther Lake family. However, Arrow Lake S won't be available until the second half of 2024 as per the rumors, so Intel has to sustain with the help of Raptor Lake Refresh, which is supposedly going to feature improved specifications and thankfully we already have some leaked benchmarks of these CPUs which you can see in this video right here. Lastly, let 
let me know your thoughts about the stories I shared in today's video and subscribe if you don't want to miss any latest hardware news. Make sure to turn on the notifications to get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you in the next one.